Professor Shaney, can you explain a bit more what APC Christian political leaders have against this Muslim-Muslim ticket, considering the fact that you all are members of the same party? Uh, thank you very much. Um, the issue here is right in our constitution as APC. We promise not to discriminate. We promise to be fair and just. And now we have been running a system in this country where if one person is of one faith, then the second person is of another faith. Now if, and it has been an agreed way of doing things that we uh, have come to accept, suddenly went our party leader, uh, when he started his campaign, he met with certain persons uh, from the north and promised them that he would do a Muslim Muslim ticket right from the beginning. So we try to interact through our colleagues, through our friends who are close to him, that if you do so, you will alienate an important section of the country. The faith is important. Two, if you do so, you bring religion to the forefront of politics. It has been under. But now if you insist on a Muslim, Muslim ticket, religion now becomes uh, uh, part of the ballot. Religion now becomes in the ballot. And that is not healthy for our nation. But uh, it appears he had made up his mind. Professor Shinny, yes, it's uh, really deep feelings uh, people are having about this all over the country. Um, now that the situation, now that he has made his decision, we know what it is. Um, what steps or what will the Christians within the party do? What are the next steps? Well, there are many options. The first option, as you have noticed, nationwide, the rivers, delta, the legal, and there are so many. They are leaving our party. Is that healthy for us in the party? We want our party to win and not people run away from the party. So we are now seeing that. The second option is if we are so aggrieved and they tell us, as when they took Shetima, that he was competent. Then our point is, does it mean there is no northern Christian that is competent? And let me play with a name. Dogara has been a speaker of the National Assembly. He was number three person in line of succession. Do you mean that person as a third person is not competent to be number two in this country? That you leave him and pick others? So... If he has decided to make religion on the ballot, it becomes a problem for us. It becomes very difficult for us to sell the party. In 2015, I am one of those who worked so hard for Buhari's emergence. And even when PDP in those days campaigned that Buhari will bring religion to the forefront and he will neglect us, we tried to convince our, our our constituents, that Buhari, when he was in the army, this is what he did. Of course, now we can't say the same thing again after seven years in power. Now it's, it's going to be more difficult for us if a Muslim, Muslim ticket becomes a permanent future in our Nigerian political architecture. Well, Professor, thank you for outlining the options that are available, but how quickly should we expect to see an implementation as opposed to just an analysis? First and foremost, in politics, you try to negotiate, you try to talk, you try to persuade the other. If we are not listened to by the camp, of our national leader and our flag bearer. If we are not listened to, before he even gets the power of presidency, what will happen when he finally gets 
that instrument of power. That's what we wonder. The second thing is we have no choice but to go to our colleagues. And by the way, let me say this. It's not only Christians that are protesting. We have a lot of Muslim colleagues who have talked to us, whom we are working together, who are saying this is not Islamic, that Islam likes justice. They like equity. So if you go to a system where it's very unfair, you are putting pressure on them to be viewed as if they are not a just religion. And this is the point. So we'll go back to them and go back to our constituent all over the nation and said we've tried, we've talked, and they didn't listen to us. What do we do? We encourage them to go and vote. Well, Professor Shani, it does seem like the APC at the moment is trying to maneuver or is fighting to accommodate the ambition of one individual as against providing real leadership and governance. I mean, if the APC, as you say, is playing up religion with its choices, why then should the party return to power in 2023? Well, that's what we are afraid of. We want like Obasanjo handed over to another PDP leader, we wish Buhari should hand over to an APC leader. This is why we're talking. This is our party. This is the manifesto we believe in. Now, if our flag bearer does not include us as Christians within his system, we can't stop the people moving out. It would be very unfortunate. That's not our wish. But we can't stop Professor, them. let me reframe the question. If your candidate already is dividing the country with his choice, why then should he become the next president in 2023? Well, that's why I cannot campaign from the letter I signed from the memorandum, which I'm one of the signatory, that my conscience and my faith will not permit me to go and campaign in my constituency for a Muslim Muslim ticket. I have made it clear. All my colleagues made it clear. We have a conscience. We have a faith. It's difficult for us. We have nothing to offer to the Christians. The system now is very polarized. People are angry. People feel it's unjust. So if our party leadership does not change or do something to to tell our people they are different, we, we, it's difficult for them to come back to power.